Last weekend, a British journalist captured the attention of Taiwan's president with this tweet. You all better come to Taiwan after this pandemic is over. The president replied, "We can't wait to share Taiwan's natural beauty with our friends around the world. We hope everyone can stay safe during this difficult time. Taiwan will be here for you once we've beaten the pandemic." Now, as you may guess, Taiwan has already started planning for post-COVID travel. I will be telling you all about that in today's show. I'm Natalie So, and I'm Andrew Ryan. Let's check out the stories on our radar. President Tsai Ing-wen has once again made Forbes magazine's list of the world's 100 most powerful women. She's number 37 on this year's list and eighth in the category for political figures and policymakers. The magazine talks about Tsai's policies toward the U.S. and China, as well as her leadership through the COVID-19 pandemic. Taiwan's favorite triathlete has done it again. Norwegian athlete Gustav Eden became an overnight sensation in Taiwan last year after he won an event while wearing a hat emblazoned with the name of a Taiwanese temple. The people at the temple are so proud. He held on to that lucky cap and has now won his third triathlon wearing it, this time in the U.S. A group of hikers found an anteater that had jumped a fence and escaped from the Taipei Zoo in September. The anteater is back home at the zoo, a kilogram lighter for the wear, but finally safe. They fed her her favorite matcha cake to welcome her home. And it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in Taiwan. One of the most famous sites is the historic Wanjin Catholic Church in the southern county of Pingdong. A display of lights on the church facade is bringing a bit of seasonal cheer to this tropical corner of Taiwan. If you had to sell Taipei as a tourist destination, how would you sell it? Well, we have a lot of great food, beautiful scenery, a lot of friendly people. Mm -hmm. Do you think of nature? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I don't usually think of nature. I no. think of it as a big city. Um, so actually, there's this brand new trail, which is called Taipei Grand Trail. It's a hiking trail, and it's going to be featured in a National Geographic program this weekend. Check it out. A 92-kilometer hike. This is the Taipei Grand Trail. The mountains of Taipei are home to incredible ancient forests. The Taipei Grand Trail is 92 kilometers long. It travels through the mountains that surround Taipei. You can do the hike in one go, but even better, it's split into seven sections, easily accessible by public transport, and each section can be completed in a day. One third of the trail is located in Yangmingshan National Park. It links some of Taipei's most popular scenic spots with places of cultural interest. To promote the Taipei Grand Trail, the city government reached out to National Geographic. It took director Yang Shou Yi and celebrity couple Cindy Chen and Benjamin Wong a year and three months to explore the trail's hidden gems and capture the different seasons on camera. Taipei Mayor Koenja has himself walked the trail to experience a beautiful perspective of Taipei that few people have yet to see. The mayor says he hopes the video will introduce the beauty of Taipei, especially to foreign tourists. The Taipei Grand Trail documentary is set to air on the National Geographic Channel on December 12th at 10 p.m. Taiwan time. It will broadcast simultaneously in over 30 Asian countries. And now let's move on to an award-winning ad called Taiwan, the perfect solo destination for culture and small towns.
What do you think of the ad, Andrew? Well, it's certainly beautifully shot, right? It is. What I think is amazing about it, though, is you can actually land at Taiwan Taoyuan International Airport, the main airport in Taiwan, and within like an hour or so, you can be in a small town. Uh, whether or not that's realistic, I'm not sure. I mean, I think you could definitely do you it. You can. But I'm I sure probably it is realistic. Would, I'd go to the hotel first. <laughs> Check in. <laughs> well, she was at a stopover, right? <laughs> that's and true. she went to Sansha, she went to Inga. Got to see the mountains. I think it's great. A lot of small towns. Uh, that's one of the big themes this year, actually. Mm, small town tourism. Right. Yeah. So a lot of great things to see at small towns in Taiwan. Now, next year is going to be the year of cycling. Have a look at this stunning award-winning ad. How far can two wheels take me? Taiwan, the heart of Asia. Now that makes me want to go cycling. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. How about a bus ride, Natalie? I like cycling, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great to be on the road and see, feeling the wind in your hair and everything. You can definitely appreciate uh, the beauty at a slower pace, I think. Right, yeah. right. Now, uh, here's another idea. Grab them by the nostalgia. I want to show you a video of one local bus company and what it's doing to bring back the tourists. There used to be a saying in Taiwan, in the skies you have China Airlines, and on the ground you have the Jinma Express. And for many people, it was the impeccably dressed bus attendants who left an impression. They were a fixture of the Jinma Express ever since it launched in 1959. Now on the 60th anniversary of the Central Cross Island Highway, one local bus company is bringing back the attendants. They hired four students from a local university and one of the original bus attendants to train them. We have to look at our script, help customers and watch the traffic, she says. It's easy to get motion sickness. Another attendant says that older passengers often share with them memories of days gone by. If you want to take one of the special Special buses, the tickets are hard to come by. They make only four trips every weekend along the Central Cross Island Highway. This transportation fan, surnamed Lin, bought his ticket two months ago and then rode his scooter for two hours just to ride the bus. It was worth it, he says, because he's never been on a bus with attendants before. They also offer professional introductions to the scenery between Gu Guan and Li Shen, a road that's closed to most travelers. This special service only lasts until the end of December. It's a rare opportunity to see a beautiful part of Taiwan and experience bus travel as the previous generations did. So those are some very creative ways that Taiwan is promoting tourism. Which was your favorite? I like the cycling. The cycling one? Yeah. That was definitely beautifully shot. Uh, so up next, we're going to go into Hashtag Taiwan. Tis the season for social media challenges. That seems to be the case in Taiwan, at least. Over the past month, I've done hashtag Taiwans on two popular challenges. There was the write a sentence with built-in audio challenge where people tried to use words to elicit sounds. Then the misspell my name challenge last episode. Those challenges dealt with sights and sounds. This week's challenge deals with taste. People in Taiwan are sharing foods that they don't like. It's called the hashtag challenge, which means hashtag foods that shouldn't exist on this planet challenge. I mean, talk about going nuclear. You're not even trying to accommodate other people's tastes. You're straight up saying these foods should not exist. I mean, I personally have problems with pineapple on pizza, but that doesn't mean I go around ridiculing people for loving it. Well, actually, that's not true. You know what? This challenge is all right. So what kind of food do people hate in Taiwan? For one, a lot of people dislike san se to, which is a chopped corn, carrot, and pea medley. It's a vegetable combination common in Taiwan used in school lunches and boxed meals. You can usually find them in the frozen section. 
I mean, I don't mind it, but man, people act like it stole their lunch money in the third grade. William Ingwe Xie included a screenshot from a news report that said the medley was a children's favorite. He called it fake news and included the hashtag we're talking about today. However, without a doubt, the most commonly despised food is cilantro. I don't know if it's common in other places, but this doesn't come as much of a surprise to me. People in Taiwan are very opinionated about cilantro. Heck, someone online is even trying to sell a shirt that says, if you eat cilantro, you'll die. Apparently, there's a scientific reason for all of this. Many studies have shown that a hate for cilantro might be genetic. People with a certain gene may register cilantro as having a soapy taste. I don't have that gene. Or do I? Maybe I just like eating soap. Here is one post that got me really concerned. Ma Yu Qian says she doesn't like green vegetables, carrots, mushrooms, vegetable type melons, peppers, taro, wood ear fungus, and of course, cilantro. I mean, I hope she gets enough dietary fiber is all I'm saying. You know how people say you learn something new every day? Well today, I learned something horrific. Chun Shi said the food that shouldn't exist is pineapple wood ear fungus stir fry. Pineapple wood ear fungus stir fry. At first, I thought this was some kind of sick joke. I thought this person was just coming up with the gnarliest food combination they could think of and putting them together in a way they should never be joined. And then I got curious and found out that this dish is actually a thing. Yes, pineapple wood ear fungus stir fry is real, ladies and gentlemen. And here's my reaction when I found out. Oh, 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 you put ginger and garlic in it? Oh, that's so wrong. Oh, and you make it spicy, of course. Why wouldn't you put peppers in there? This is so much worse than pineapple on pizza. Oh, this was a mistake. Just finding out about this was a huge mistake. Oh, some has meat in it. Oh, it's, no, can't do this. Oh, oh. Anyway, this week we have an insider connection because Jessica Cheng, the woman who edits our show, participated in this week's challenge. She said she doesn't eat sweet peppers, bitter melon, or eggplant. I mean, bitter melon I get, but sweet peppers and eggplant? Hey, Jessica, Jessica. Eh,我问你哦,问你哦 葡萄可以,但是不知道水果啊 So with the addition of this latest challenge, we now have challenges that deal with sight, hearing, and taste. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that the next challenges will deal with smell and touch. Are we gonna have a challenge about smells that make us nostalgic, like how camphor oil makes me think about my grandma's house? Oh, or maybe we'll make a list of things that you touch but are underrated, like a warm pile of laundry on a cold winter evening. What do you think? What might the next big social media challenge in Taiwan be? Today's brain game is called Trim That Tree. And as you can see, we have a Christmas tree with us here in the studio. And Natalie and Leslie are going to work together to put some decorations on it. So, Leslie looks nervous already. You okay? I don't like these brain games. <laughs> you do them, I just don't. <laughs> That's why I love these brain games. So, how are they going to decorate the tree? Of course, they're not just going to simply put ornaments on it. So, I'm going to explain this to you. Natalie has a box here. Now, inside the box, we have eight ornaments, which are uniquely Taiwanese. Every single ornament looks like something from Taiwan. So what's going to happen is, Leslie, you're going to be uh, putting oh, on the blinders. Come on. <laughs> oh, this is bad. <laughs> and what's going to happen is uh, now you can go ahead and remove the cover from the box. We're going to put 90 seconds on the clock. And when I say go, that's when we'll begin. But first, I want you to just imagine, Leslie, take this yeah. out? that she's going to hold up something. You can hold up the first one. Um, and what's going to happen is she's going to describe it to you without saying what it is. Oh, 
So if it's a jolly, bo- if it's great. a boba tea, she can't say this is a boba tea. I can say you can drink it. You yes, but you can't say it's a drink. Okay, and then <laughs> okay, and then when he. So if he guesses happens. it correctly, then you, yeah, and of course he's holding it and touching it so he can ah. guess what they are too, right? And then if he guesses it correctly, then we'll have him put it on the tree. <laughs> oh, <that laughs> Once works. he puts it on the tree, then yeah, you can go on to the next one. Oh, okay. So I can describe it without saying exactly what it is. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. I'm in the holiday spirit. Okay. Why not? Are you guys ready? Let's do this, Andrew. Oh, wait, that's not you. Sorry, that's the tree. All right. Yay. Go. Our favorite mascot. Uh, uh, oh, Tony's Black Bear? Yes. Ah. Yes. <laughs> there you go, Good. buddy. Okay. What everybody cooks with. Uh, um, uh, yeah, that's oh. right. That's an electric it's steamer. An electric pot. steamer. Yeah. Right. Oh, all right. Um, I'm vibing. Has in their home what they wear on their sh- uh, foot. Uh, slippers, the, the blue white slippers. That's right. Uh, Put them on the front, Leslie. You're pretty much on I, the side. I, it's all the same to me. I don't know if I'm a front, back, <laughs> left, right. It's I'm, I'm all disoriented. I can't. Okay, now. This is how Andrew gets to work. A scooter. That's right. Is, go- is it a Gogoro scooter? That's, it's not uh-oh, a Gogoro. Uh-oh, this uh-oh, is not a Gogoro. I lost the loop. Oh, Leslie. I, uh, okay, okay, okay. This is what we like to eat at, um, at the Dragon Boat Festival. Uh, 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 sticky rice dumplings. Yes, yeah, it's very good. Okay. Songzi. Okay. Oh okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 This is a popular, very healthy super fruit. Um, which is Pattaya, like mango, green. Uh, guava. Yeah. Yes. Ah, very okay. good. <laughs> okay. 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 We're doing good. We're doing good. This is, I this think is this is what a mode of transportation for. Um, Aboriginal people? Oh, um, this is uh, like a like a canoe, like a yeah. boat. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good, Leslie. You're uh, you're killing it. You're doing great. I, um, like awesome. when you take away the sense of sight, the the senses and are then heightened. This is a delicious food. It's chewy. It's a dessert. Mochi. Yes. yes. Ah. Wow. Nice. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> With just seven seconds left to spare. Yay. How'd nice. I do? Wait, wait. Here's the reveal. Here's nice. the reveal. Have a look. Wow. <laughs> Maybe. A certain angle like <laughs> how, how about we turn the tree <laughs> yeah, just a go. little bit nice, so everyone uh, can see it? It's a nice spread. <laughs> Except oh, I think uh, right. that, that, that stinky rice dumpling, dumpling's a little lonely. This one over here? Wow, That's I can't believe I didn't overlap nice. them. Very That's pretty good. good. Good description, Natalie. Well, I'm impressed. very well. So if you want to, uh, I, you know, the great suggestion I have for you all is if you want to decorate your Christmas tree with some uniquely Taiwanese ornaments, you can buy keychains. Mm. Ah. So you just go to any tourist shop, you buy little keychains, and they make great Christmas ornaments. That's what you did, right? Yeah. That's great, man. Great that's a great idea. Wow. So there you go. That's a very Taiwan Christmas tree. I tell you what, we are all in desperate need of a vacation. <laughs> so our final question today is we're going to ask, uh, where would you most like to go right now? in Taiwan. Let's start with you, Leslie. Um, funny you should mention this because on the way into work, I was just thinking, I would love to go a place with no rain. <laughs> it's oh, been raining well, for... See. See, it's not raining here. Uh, inside, inside, but like out there. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, I haven't, I can't remember the last time I saw the sun. It's only been a couple weeks. I, I, I still can't remember. <laughs> and then after I made this, I was just like, I wonder where it's not raining and the entire Taiwan is raining right now. Oh, so. man. Oh. Well, Natalie, where do you want to go in the I rain? I would love to be, well, not in the rain, but I would love to be swimming with the turtles Ooh. in Xiaolilcho. Oh, it's so wonderful. That is a great, great place to go. Nice place wonderful. to relax. Uh, this is probably no surprise to any of you if you know me well. Taidong. Oh. I want to go home, man. <laughs> so every year at the end of the year, December 31st, the Puyuma tribe uh, celebrates the hunting festival. So that's where I'll be heading very soon. That's real cool. cool. Yeah. Well, hopefully you can go to some of these places really soon as well. We want to thank you for joining us for this edition of Taiwan Insider. Be sure to connect with us on social media. Yes, and if you like our program, subscribe and leave a comment. We would love to hear from you. For Taiwan Insider, I am Natalie So. I'm Leslie Liao. And I'm Andrew Ryan. See you next week.